Um, I'm really happy to be here, and I really liked what Ian said about like starting to give talks. Because one of the first conferences I went to was Pi Data in Boston, like three years ago, um, and I went on my birthday, like kind of like as a birthday present to myself, I guess. I don't know. It was on my birthday, and I was like so excited, and I was like, other people are excited about Python and like data stuff too. This is the best, and like I had a good time, and I gave a lightning talk, um, and now I give more talks, and it's the best. Um, so I'm stoked. So um, we're going to talk about machine learning. Um, which is one of my favorite things. Um, I, I saw this talk uh, in the last session where um, the speaker was talking about how he trained a computer to, um, to play Space Invaders and to win, right? And he trained the computer to play Doom and to win. And I was so impressed because like, this is like the promise of machine learning, right? Is that like you're like one person and you have like your laptop and like some AWS instances and you pay like $8 um, and then you can like train a computer to do these amazing things. Um, and it's really true. And I kind of love machine learning, um, but it's also kind of weird and does some dumb stuff. Um, so we're going to talk about like how we love it and also how it's kind of weird and dumb. Um, so um, about me, um, I, I actually uh, spent the last two, two years doing machine learning for real. Um, like they paid me and stuff, um, and I, I worked on machine learning stuff at credit card uh, fraud. Um, so, I want to talk for like three seconds about what machine learning is, just to make sure that like we all know. Um, so, I, I tried to come up with like the simplest possible problem, and I was like, well, when I see someone's name, I can like guess like what country they are they're from, right? So I can be like, oh, John is probably like American, like Johannes is probably maybe German or something, because um, like there's lots of people in Germany. Um, and so the way it works. Um, is like you would imagine like your perfect data set and you would just take like every person in the world and be like, well, you have every person in the world named Julia and like what country do they live in, right? Um, and then you take all of your data and then you make it into a model and you can imagine just like dropping all of the least common countries. So you could be like, Julia is like definitely American, which would be wrong because I'm Canadian, okay? Um, <laughs> but like um, you'd be right like most of the time. Um, so machine learning is just like you take a bunch of data and then you make a model. And usually the model is like a lot simpler than your data, right? Like this model is like less, takes up less space on the screen. Okay, cool. Um, and yeah, so your model is basically just your data. Okay, n so n now that we talked about like really basic stuff, we're going to do like weird stuff and talk about something fun, um, which is neural networks. <laughs> um, who watched the AlphaGo game and was like, oh my god, who's going to win? Oh my god. <laughs> Me too. I was like surprisingly into it. I didn't really expect it. I was like, oh, this is going to be boring. And then I was like, but who's going to win today? And then it like, kept on going for five days and I was so into it. Anyway, um, so like I, I watched this game, right? Um, and I was like really confused about what's going on with neural networks. And I wanted to know a little bit more about them and what was happening. Um, and in particular, um, there's this feature on Google Photos, which had been like mystifying to me and upsetting to me for a long time, where you search for like beaches and then it shows you pictures of like you at the beach. Like, that's me at the beach in, like, Puerto Rico. And it was really fun. And I went with my friends. You can see, anyway, it's just, like, so great. Um, and you search for, like, cars, and it's like, oh, there's cars. But there's also, like, Turkish men fishing, um, which is different from cars. <laughs> so, like, like, it's, like, kind of good, but also kind of weird. Um, and then you search for fire hydrants, and it's, like, all over it. Like, it showed me, like, only fire hydrants. Um, this is, I went on a trip to Toronto, and, like, I was like really surprised that the fire hydrants were yellow. I don't know. Um, I took a lot of pictures of fire hydrants. Um, and then I searched for the word baby, and it just showed me pictures of me, which I didn't really understand. Like there were like only two babies and almost zero. Uh, yeah, it was just like all me. So like that's kind of weird. Um, so I wanted to know what was going on, and like something about how neural networks work. Um, so. Uh, I went to a bar one day, um, and someone gave me this paper. Well, they gave me three papers, and this was one of them. <laughs> uh, uh, because I only read papers if someone like gives them to me in person, with, in paper. Um, so it was called Explaining and Harnessing Adversarial Examples, and I read it, and I was like, oh man, I think I understand something about neural networks now, um, and I want to like tell people about it. Um, and in, in particular, one thing that this paper reminded me of um, was that neural networks are not, in fact, like magic. Um, they're just like math, right? Um, like they're, you write down some equations and like you have your com computer calculate some things and like maybe it works, or maybe it doesn't. Um, and I remembered that I have a math degree, <laughs> which is like very helpful. And I was like, oh, maybe I can like understand how this works because I actually do know math. Um, why not? Um, 
And I should say that I basically like didn't know anything about neural networks going into this, um, even though machine learning is my job. Um, and but I kind of wanted to know because I like felt bad that I didn't know anything about them. Um, so I read this paper, um, and the paper was like, pretend um, we have like a neural network that can classify images, um, much like the Google Photos thing, that like I don't understand why it thinks I'm a baby, um, and um, it can classify like pandas. So and and also other things. Um, so uh, it says you can take a picture of a panda, and then you're not, we'll be like, that's a panda. Um, and then you can change it a little bit, imperceptibly, so that the neural network thinks the panda is a vulture. So I was like, oh, that's like, kind of surprising and weird and cool, right? Um, and like, I felt like if I understood how this happened, um, then I could understand neural networks like a little bit better, like 5% better, right? Um, so, it was like a four-page paper, and I had my laptop here, and I wanted to know, like, can I like implement the stuff in the paper on my laptop? Um, the answer turned out to be yes, uh, which was good, because I emailed someone, and I was like, I'm going to write an article where I implement stuff in this paper, and then I was like, oh god, can I actually do it? <laughs> and it was like kind of scary. Um, so the code for all this is all in like a Jupyter notebook, which is um, like on my GitHub, because uh, it turns out that it's not that hard. Um, even though it took me like four days. But I didn't know anything, so four days isn't bad. Okay, so what's a neural network? Um, I, I find it like easy to get into the weeds of like, oh, what is it truly in its soul? And you're like, okay, it's a function, right? Um, it's a function which takes in images of dogs, and it's like, that's a dog, right? This one in particular. Um, and in fact, it doesn't just say it's a dog. Um, you take in an image of a dog, and then it's like, okay, it's maybe a dog, or a different dog, or a different dog, or a different dog, or a different dog. And then at the end, it's like, or maybe a tennis ball. Uh, and then it keeps going, and it's like, no, but I think it's a dog. <laughs> um, so, um, so, so, so for like every different label in the data set, um, you have like the probability that this image is that label, right? So there's some lower probability that this is like um, a fence, or like whatever, or a sword. Um, but tennis ball is the only one that made it up into the top 15. Um, and the shape of the input data um, is, of course, not actually an image, um, but like a, a bunch of like RGB pairs, right? Um, so these are the reds and greens and blues for a cat. I believe it. Um, okay, so then the next thing I did um, after I read this paper was I spent like 10 hours setting up like neural network software on my computer, um, and I was like, oh, what's happening? But I eventually figured it out, and it wasn't too bad. Um, I used this software called Cafe, Cafe, IDK. Um, and then, um, so the, the paper, um, I think people often talk about training neural networks. I don't actually know how to do that. Um, but I can, I know how to download one, right? Um, so the neural network was talking, the paper was talking about this network called GoogleNet, um, which won some competition in like 2014. And I was like, that's pretty legit. Can I download it? And so I could download it. So I clicked download. <laughs> um, and it was like 50 megabytes. And then I had it on my computer, um, which was my goal. Um, and then I wanted to predict stuff with it, right? And see if I could actually get it to work. Um, and so I was like, what's a sword? And it was like, I think that's a paper knife. And I was like, okay, why not? And then it told me that this cat was a cat. And it told me that this garbage can was a garbage can. And I was really happy. Um, and then it told me that this queen was like a shower cap. <laughs> <laughs> and it, like, so it turns out that the neural network does not in fact know about people. That's not like a concept it's aware of. Um, which is maybe a good lesson about machine learning. Um, <laughs> but anyway. Um, so, so I made all these like fun predictions, and I'd like tweeted about it, and I'd be like, "Ha ha ha! Twitter, it's a shower cap, very funny." Um, and then we needed to get down to business of like implementing the paper, right? Um, so we needed to trick the neural network. Um, there was an intervening intervening step here where I was like really confused, and I like tweeted about stuff, and I was like, well, "What's going on?" And like people explained it to me, and then it was okay. Um, so we need to talk about some math for a second. So I have this really great graph. Um, where you have some images, you have some space of images, and for every image, you have the amount that that image is like a panda, right? Um, according to the neural network. So, um, the math that we're doing is we have our image is somewhere up high, right? Our panda is very much like a panda. 
And what we want to do is we want to make it less like a panda. Um, so this is like pretty simple, like conceptually. Um, and then all we have to do is figure out like how do we get that arrow, right? Like how do we figure out which direction to go in? Because we don't want to accidentally go up. And there's like a bajillion dimensions. Um, so it's kind of hard to find the right direction. Um, it turns out that it's actually not hard to find the right direction. Um, because the way you find um, the direction to change function is you take the derivative, right? Which is what we learn in calculus. Um, which is the, where the like math degree helped. Um, so you take the derivative, and it turns out that taking the derivative of a neural network is actually really easy. Um, and it's like a really basic uh, supported operation. And the way you do it is by this algorithm called backpropagation. Um, but really what you do is you just like run the derivative function. <laughs> and you do it, so it's super easy. Um, so what we did um, is I started out, I wanted to start out with something like really simple. So I started out with a blank screen. And I was like, what's a blank screen? And it was like, well, I think that's velvet or a shower curtain or a paper towel. <laughs> I was like, okay, lol, whatever, neural network. Um, so I wanted to make it more like paper towel. Um, so I, I looked at how much it was like a paper towel, right, and took the derivative in the direction of like more paper towel. And it was like, that's, that's like what I think like, the essence of paper towel is right now. <laughs> okay, um, so before we were at like 4% paper towel, and then when we add it, when we add this like vector, um, we get up to 14% paper towel, which is like cool, um, but not 100%. So um, the next thing I tried was I was like, well, if instead of taking one big step, I take a lot, a lot of like little tiny steps, um, maybe it'll work better. So I tried that, um, and it totally did work better. Um, the blue line is like how much is like a paper towel. And it goes like all the way up to like 100% when I take a lot of like little steps. Um, and we end up with a paper towel. It's probability like 99.9%, .9%, um, obviously. <laughs> um, and if you blow up this image, you can actually see there are all these like little weird swirly things, which is kind of cool. And that made me like feel better about what was going on. I was like, oh, it thinks that the swirlies are like paper towel -y or something, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what's actually happening? Um, so we can do a little bit more of this too. Um, so I took a garbage can, um, and if you take like uh, the derivative of the neural network around the garbage can, you get like a little garbage can shape, and it's really cute. And I was really happy. Um, um, oh yeah, I also turned a kitten into a bath towel. <laughs> so it turns out if you make a kitten less like a kitten, um, it quickly turns into a bath towel. <laughs> Which is like kind of adorable in a lot of ways. Uh, um, and then I subtracted the kitten from the bath towel kitten. So like, like, th and then I got this. Um, and you can kind of maybe see, okay, so I asked someone else if they could see that those like, in the right corner there were ears. And now I'm like, maybe I made that up. So I don't know. Um, but I felt like there were ears in this image when I looked at it the first time. Maybe you don't. <laughs> Who knows? Um, so, but I promised you the path from a panda to a vulture. Um, so I'm gonna show you the graph. I did 100 steps. Um, and in order to become a vulture, if you're a panda, apparently you need to first become like a gibbon and a Madagascar cat and an ostrich <laughs> and all kinds of weird other stuff. And I actually asked someone who works at Google about this. Um, and he was like, oh yeah, totally. There's like this like panda ostrich space of images. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Like, how is this an obvious fact to you? I don't understand. Um, but I, but I, I thought it was cool um, because when I work with data sets, um, I get to like know those data sets really well and I get to know like weird facts about those data sets really well. Um, so I thought it was cool that like he obviously like knew this set of like input images to like this um, machine learning like competition really well and he knew that like pandas, I think this might be just because they're both black. I don't know, I have questions. Um, um, so yeah, this was like the result, and I was really happy, and I got it to work on my computer, which is what I wanted. Um, I wanted to show you just like how much code this was, which is like, I think not a lot. That was like basically all the code. It's like cut off on the side, but it doesn't matter, because you can't read it anyway. Um, um, and the kind of like core of the code is that I was like, hey, I want to like trick this image into being this like desired output, and so I just like do this loop, and then I like take the derivative, and then like add like a small delta, and then like I keep on doing that, and then at the end I'm done. Um, so it was like surprisingly simple. And like I just tried stuff that I thought would work according to the paper, that the paper said it would work, and then did work. Um, 
Um, this is stuff that you can kind of do yourself. Um, I wrote like a article about it, which you can go read. Um, and there's like a Docker image, and all the code is there. Um, but one thing that I thought was cool about this, and maybe like important, um, is that if you can trick a neural network, maybe you can like start to understand it, right? And maybe you don't understand everything about it, because like, I don't know, it's like a whole research domain, right? Um, and if you understood everything about it, maybe someone would pay you like a bajillion dollars. Um, but we can start to understand like something. And so we know that machine learning is really cool. Um, but the other important thing to think about is like machine learning is also kind of important, right? So you can do this with like really cool stuff on your computer, um, but then sometimes the cool stuff that's used on your computer gets used to like affect like actual decisions and stuff, right? Um, like that's why like I got paid to do machine learning. So you have things like photo classification, which are maybe not that big of a deal, um, and maybe it doesn't really matter if uh, Google Photos thinks that I'm a baby. Um, but then there's like spam filtering, which affects what email you get, which is maybe more important. And then people often get really excited about things that are like, oh, maybe we can use machine learning to prove like loan applications, like to figure out like if you should get money to run your business. And I'm like, oh God, <laughs> like machine learning is ridiculous. I don't want to do that. Um, I'm afraid. Um, so I just wanted to like talk through a few reasons to be kind of skeptical of machine learning, um, even though like I love it so much. Um, and so like one thing is that, like, and a, a lot of these are things things that I think are really like evident to like machine learning practitioners. Um, so like it's only as good as the data you put into it, right? Like we talked about this like Julia is Canadian data, and if you like forget about like China then like, you're not gonna be able to classify any Chinese people. Um, and, but th this can happen in like, l less obvious ways, right? Um, so sometimes I would be like, looking at, um, like people would ask me why we didn't catch some fraud, and they're like, well, like, what about this thing that happened a year ago? And, I'll, and I might be like, oh, our algorithm doesn't know about stuff that happened a year ago, so it can look at that, right? Um, and it's really easy to, like, to like, accidentally like, leave out data, which is actually really important. Um, and then, the machines can't learn from it, because it's not there. Um, who writes programs? Who writes programs with bugs? <laughs> Me too. Um, I think one thing that I told someone, and they were like, oh, that's obvious, but I didn't realize, is that machine learning programs also just have bugs in them that are dumb. Um, so for example, like, you can imagine um, you could use like a country database to identify IP addresses, and that country database could just get out of date and then you're like wrong about what country that IP address comes from, and then maybe you make a bad decision based on that, um, or maybe you just have a bug in your code, right? Um, and so like you kind of have like this like pure magical mathematical world of beauty, and then you have like your actual program, <laughs> which is like quite different <laughs> and like may not actually work. Um, this is really good paper about like the fact that machine learning programs have bugs and that it's like quite hard to design. Um, really robust, like, large-scale machine learning systems called Machine Learning, the High Interest Credit Card of Technical Debt um, by Google. Um, and I really love it, and I read it, and I was like, it's me, it's my life. Um, so if you're interested in this topic of, like, how to make machine learning systems that, um, like, process, like, tons of events and need to, like, work well at scale, this is a really good paper. It's, like, very accessibly written. It's, like, six, ten pages or something. Um, I really loved it. Um, Another thing that can happen is you forgot to tell your model about people, um, which was this like thing here, right? Um, I, I think this is like surprisingly normal that like you like decided to model something and you had some view of the world when you made your decisions, and then later on you were like, oh, that makes no sense because I forgot like this like class altogether, right? Um, and then the machine learning is like, that's what you told me to do, and you're like, oh yeah, well, <laughs> okay. Um, and then, and then sometimes it just like doesn't work, right? Um, so, so this is like another thing that uh, Google Photos thinks is a baby, which is a Donald Trump piñata. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and what? <laughs> I, I saw it in San Francisco like months ago, actually, like eight months ago. Um, it wasn't as intense then, um, <laughs> but um, yeah. So some and like. One thing that I like to like remind people of is if you have a machine learning algorithm which is right like 80% of the time, I think that's considered like really good, um, but it can still be wrong like 20% of the time, right? Um, and oh, I want to say something about bugs. Yeah, 
Um, one thing I want to say about bugs is sometimes people would like will tell me that my machine learning isn't working, and I'll be like, oh, it's probably doing some like cool smart machine learning thing, right? And then like I'll go look, and I'll be like, oh, <laughs> like it wasn't doing a cool smart machine learning thing, and that happens like more often than I would like to like admit, <laughs> even though apparently I'm telling all of you. Um, and then the last thing about machine learning is it can have sort of like weird unexpected consequences. Um, I think these weird unexpected consequences often get like a lot of press. Um, so there, there was this news a while ago about Target um, and how they wrote um, some like analytics to figure out if someone might be pregnant um, and then they could send them, send them like cool coupons um, on like for like maternity clothing. Um, and they wrote this stuff and it totally worked. Um, and then people got this mail, and then someone would be like, hey, you're pregnant, and the person would be like, oh god, you weren't supposed to know that. <laughs> um, and this is like a super uh, important topic, which I'm not really gonna talk about a lot, um, but there's a really good talk about this called Consequences of Insightful Algorithm by Karina Zona, um, where she just has like a lot of different interesting cases, um, which are fun to think about, or not fun, terrifying, interesting <laughs> to think about. Um, so, I think, like we all work with data and we're all kind of like skeptical and we know to ask questions and we know that like data science is like often like kind of like things, everything goes wrong all the time. Um, and I watch a lot of talks that kind of like stop here and they're like, do the right thing, fix your models, make them work. And I'm like, oh, how though, help. <laughs> um, so I just want to talk like a little bit about model debugging and like how to make stuff that works. Because um, I think it's really fun to make stuff that works. Um, so one thing that I do sometimes um, is I'll like magically guess, right? And I'll be, I'll, I'll be like, what's wrong? And I'll be like, I know with my brain because I'm amazing. Um, this works only occasionally. <laughs> um, the, the second thing, um, this is a really obvious thing to do, which is to, like look at the model. Um, so this is really easy. If you have like, let's say you have some model, which is like $1,000 times your age plus like $10,000 times your gender, um, then it's like really easy to understand why that model like might or might not be working. Um, and then you sometimes have things like decision trees, and if you have like a little decision tree, um, it's also kind of obvious why this is, isn't working, right? So this is a, a decision tree about like who died on the Titanic. So it's like, if it's a woman, they survived. If it's a man, and they're more than 10, they died. So it's like very simplistic, but it's very easy to understand why it might not work, because um, it's very simple. Um, but then what happens in real life um, is you end up with like much more complicated decision trees, right? Um, so this is a decision tree I made. Um, this is also much more simple than most of the things that I've worked with, um, and it's intentionally like uh, impossible to understand. Um, but but the um, the reason that this is actually tractable, so for a long time, I think for like a year, I believed that it was like impossible to look at huge decision trees. Um, and then I, it turned out that I was totally wrong. Because if you took a, take like an individual instance, so like you have like one thing that you put through a decision tree, it only makes like 12 decisions along the way or something probably, um, or like maybe 20. Like it makes like a finite amount of decisions along the way. Um, so I, I basically thought that this wouldn't be helpful and that it wouldn't work. And then uh, the product manager on my team, uh, who's like the best, built this like thing in JavaScript, which like takes the random forest and like shows you all the decisions it made um, and like explains to you exactly what happened um, without like really without even trying to do anything clever. It just like here's what happened, here's why this thing like why the algorithm made this decision. And then I started using it. And I was like, this is the most useful thing in the world. Like now I can see exactly what happened all the time. How did I not have this before? Like, and it's something that you can build from scratch, like really easily. Like, because um, random forests are really simple, um, and like linear models are really simple, and a lot of like machine learning stuff is stuff that like you can just like understand almost everything about how it works with like relatively little effort. Um, that's not true about neural networks, but it is true about things like decision trees, right? Um, is like how they work is super simple. Um, so. Oh yeah, the other really fun thing you can do um, is make two models. Um, so often you'll, you might start out and you'll make like a really complicated model. Um, and someone told me that his favorite thing to do is take the complicated model and look at what it, its outputs are and then like model the complicated model with a different simple model, um, which might look more like this, right? And then like 
you still don't understand exactly what the complicated model did, um, but you have like a better sense for what's going on. And maybe you can use the simple model to like, explain your complicated model. And I think this is like a surprisingly powerful ta tactic. Um, my last like super favorite thing to do is to talk to academics who works in academia, like who's like a PhD student. You're the best. I love you. <laughs> Uh, academics are amazing. Um, PhD students are like also my favorite. Um, I went to NIPS, which is this, this like academic machine learning conference, um, and I like spent a lot of time running around and asking PhD students like explain stuff to me because um, they're all like really smart and they know so much and they they were like largely willing to talk to me and they were like oh wow um, you think I know stuff and I was like that's because you're amazing and you know everything <laughs> um, and I got them to explain like recurrent neural networks to me and it was wonderful. Um, yeah, um, so academics are my favorite. Uh, reading papers is like very occasionally my favorite, mostly if someone hands them to me. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh, and I want to talk a little bit about how simple systems are like the best. Um, who likes building like really simple models? That's like all of you. I don't even need to tell you anything. <laughs> um, like linear, I have a linear model that I worked on at work. Um, and I can't tell you how much money it saved the company, but it was a lot. It was like a lot of money, <laughs> and it was wonderful. Like linear models are like the best thing in the world. Um, and I like totally didn't believe that they would work when I was a math student and I was dumb, because I was like, it's like a world. De the world definitely doesn't behave a linear model. That's stupid. And then I like started actually using them, and I was like, oh, <laughs> linear model isn't stupid. I'm stupid. <laughs> like they're like the best thing in the world. Um, yeah. So. That's it. Now you know how to trick a neural network. Um, and maybe you're excited about breaking machine learning models and using, like, breaking them to understand them. Um, I am going to let you go and, like, away. Um, but you can ask me an unlimited question, number of questions in real life and also on Twitter. Um, thanks for listening. <laughs>